Hey there, Joe Walker here from Def Digits Guitar Lessons, and today I want to help you through the hardest part of Stairway to Heaven. It's the bridge, the part that everyone kind of loses track of. You're supposed to go through the bridge, keep the beat intact, and then straight into the guitar solo. And if anyone is a beat too far ahead or too far behind, then the guitar solo kind of crumbles before it starts. And that's a disaster for us guitarists. Here it is now with a metronome going all the way through so you can hear where those beats are supposed to be around the guitar. The problem with the real thing in the recording is that the drums don't keep playing all the way through. The drums kind of do some impressionist stuff along with the guitar, but the drums are not keeping the beat and making it clear where beat one is or beat two or anything like that. So here's where it really is. One, two, three, four. So let me first show you the easy part of this, and that's just playing the part on the guitar. That part's easy, feeling the beat and playing that part at the right time is the hard part. Coming out of the verse, we land on a D chord as a whole note chord. We hold it for four beats. So we're coming out of the verse doing... One, two, three, four, and then we go into the bridge from there. So we hold that D chord. We land on the downbeat on beat one, hold it for four beats, then we're doing this kind of move where we lift the middle finger off of D. The high E string is going fret zero, two, three, uh, so it's open high E string, second fret, now it's a real D chord, and then pinky comes down on fret three, and you're strumming going down, up, down on those three. And you do that three times, I think. one or on the third at the end of the third one we do like that and then we land on this C add nine chord and here I'm playing this uh, mute low E string third fret A string mute the D string with the back of your second finger and then open third fret open and doing that leaves your first finger free to come in on the high E string and come on and off the second fret, like that. So landing on this C add 9 chord, first I hit just the low notes, maybe just the bass note, and then land on this uh, first finger on the second fret, that makes it a C add 9 sharp 11, I think. back to the D thing again. Same thing on C add 9 again, but now instead of doing it twice, we go to G over B. Do the same thing there. Here your ring finger has stayed on the 3rd fret B string the whole time and now your first finger is going to the A string, second fret. So this chord is now mute the low E string, then second fret, then mute with the back of your first finger, and then open G, third fret on the B string, and the high E string is going between the second fret and open. And it just, just happens once. Like that. And then we're into A minor. We have to land on A minor on the downbeat of the solo. That's the test. If you're playing along with the music or with a metronome, you have to land on that A minor on beat one when it comes back around again. Because that is probably the second most important moment of the song where the solo starts. I'd say the most important is where the solo ends and Robert Pine's vocals come in. So now let me play that for you again slowly with the metronome again so you can hear how those different parts fit together and how they're supposed to feel on the beat. And it might not feel natural yet because everyone hears this bridge kind of backwards, so you might still be hearing it backwards where you're hearing the downbeat as the upbeat and the upbeat as the downbeat. So here it is down to 63 beats per minute. I'm going to start at the end of the verse so you can hear how it connects. Two, three, four.
once you can play those parts, that's the easy part that's done. The next thing you need to work on is just feeling how those parts fit with the beat. And if you've been listening to this song for a long time, chances are pretty good that you're hearing the bridge backwards. Everyone seems to hear it backwards. I did too for years, and then it took me a while, as I was performing this song with a band a few times, it took me a while to, to wrap my head around the right way of feeling the bridge. I Conceptually, I knew how I needed to count through it. I knew how the beats needed to go. Basically, I knew what I just explained to you, but the hard part was getting to the point where I could feel that and just play through it and feel it the right way instead of feeling it backwards like I knew I always had. So first I want to show you a video of one of my students who has been working on this for a month, maybe a couple months, working specifically on the bridge. She's been working on Stairway for a long time. We got to the bridge and I knew and I told her this is going to be the hardest part of the song. Not playing wise, but feeling the beat the right way. And it turned out it was. It took her a long time and a lot of hard work to get it. And here she is. This is my student Caroline tapping the beat with the music all the way through the bridge. This was the first lesson where she had done this successfully a few times in a row, so it was a really triumphant moment for her. So what Caroline did to finally make that breakthrough and feel the beat the right way all the way through the bridge was not to play it so many times. I think all of her playing that she had done on that part was embedding the way she was feeling it the old way. So I told her just stop playing it for a week and just sing the part and tap the beat as you're going through. And maybe air play it, maybe just imagine yourself playing it, but don't actually play it. Just sing the part going da da da, da da da. Da, 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 like that. So that's what I'm going to have you do, is I'm going to show you as I play through it the part you can sing because we can't sing the whole chord. We're really just singing one note. So you're really, you don't even need to sing the right notes. You're singing the rhythm. That's the important part. You sing the rhythm and you're tapping the beat as you go. So your hand is doing the function of the metronome and your voice is doing the function of the guitar, but it helps you internalize the way the guitar is supposed to work with the beat. So here we are back at full speed. I'm gonna put the metronome on and sing the part that you're gonna sing and tap to. Again, connecting it from the verse. Two, three. thing you need to do is put your guitar away because now we're just going to be tapping tap with your strumming hand that's more helpful because you're that's sort of what you're going to end up doing with that hand tap with your strumming hand and sing the part that we just sang it's helpful with your voice to get sort of close to the notes you don't have to be exactly on we don't need to have a good voice to do this you're just singing the rhythm so i've got my guitar here and these are the notes i want to sing first ba -da -da, on the high e string going open second fret third fret so you can give yourself a little reference pitch like that to start with, and then you're going one, two, three, four. Ba da da, ba da da, ba da 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 da, boom boom da 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 da, boom boom da 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 da, ba da da, ba da da, ba da 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 da, boom boom da ba da da, boom da 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 da. Um, that's our solo right there on the downbeat. So that's what you want to try to work towards is keeping the beat nice and steady without any hesitation or jitteriness in your in your beat keeping hand. That should be totally solid all the way through and singing the part to yourself like that. So let me go through that once again slowly and highlight the parts that are weird that you're going to have to zoom in on and try to get them. So first doing that first D open chord doing da 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 everyone feels the third strum as the downbeat Everyone seems to, when they have listened to the song for years, they feel it as three, four, da da da, da da da, like that. And I think that's a little more natural if you don't have any beat reference. But if you rewind through the song to the end of the verse, we do have a beat reference. 
the drummer just cut out a little early. Thank you, Bonzo. So what we end up with there is da da da, da da da. So that's the first thing you'll have to get your ears wrapped around is the first strum on the D chord is the one that's on the downbeat. And the very first downbeat, beat one of the bridge, is the first down strum on that D chord. So we're counting in going two, three, four, da da da, da da da, da da da, da da, boom. There's the next weird part, is we get three or four upbeat strums in a row. And that's pretty, pretty typical of Zeppelin riffs. There's a lot of syncopation in Jimmy Page's riffs when the drums are going, so it sounds a little more like something that Jimmy Page would play when we're doing it this way. So again, that last part with the upbeats is going da da da, da da, boom. That last boom is where you hit the new chord, the C add nine, we're hitting the bass strings on that chord. It's on the and of four right before the downbeat of that chord's measure. So that's pretty weird. It's weird to feel it that way, but again, typical of stuff that Zeppelin has done. So going into the next part, we're gonna go ba da da, Da da boom boom da 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 da. So your first full strum that you get on that C add nine chord, boom boom da. That strum right there is on beat two of that measure. So you can't feel like you're going like D is these four beats and then we do the strum on C add nine for these four beats. The full strum on that chord doesn't come till beat two, and also that's typical of of uh, stuff that we might expect from Zeppelin is an emphasis on beat two or beat four, those are the back beats. So that repeats on that C add nine chord, the same kind of thing twice in a row, where you get your first bass strum on the chord is on the and of four, and your first full down strum on the chord is on beat two. So if I see if I can count with my left hand fingers while I'm keeping the beat over here. Ba da 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 boom boom da 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 boom boom da 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 da. There's the next weird part is getting back into the da 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 out of the C add nine. We have that beat four that's empty. There's a longer pause there than you might be feeling. You might want to jump straight back into the D chord, but there is a beat and a half there that with nothing that's happening. So let it rest, get through beat four, and then back on beat one when you get to the D chord. So let me do that one more time. Ba da 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 boom boom da 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 boom boom da 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 ba da da like that. So you're feeling that extra beat four in between. Make sure you're feeling it, and then you can come back on beat one on the D chord. So then we repeat all of that. Ba da da ba da da ba da 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 boom boom da 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 here boom. Actually, that is on the G over B chord, hitting on beat one. So backing up to the C add nine, the second time through. Boom, boom, da, 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 da. Boom, da, 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 da. Boom, then we land on A minor on beat one. So those are all the trouble spots you might have to watch out for. Next, see if you can make it through the real recording, just listening to that and keeping the beat all the way through. Keep it intact like this. Switch back and forth between listen to the real recording and tapping and tapping with it. Do it just by yourself, singing along to it so you can go slower and zoom in on certain sections like we just did. And then once that is feeling really good, come back to the guitar and try to play it for real. Have fun. Oh wait, please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you liked this video, if you found it helpful. I've got lots more tips on my channel and lots more coming down the pipe. You'll be notified of new ones if you're a subscriber. Also go to my website, deftdigits.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You can get notified of all kinds of new stuff that I'm putting out there. See you later.